In this episode I will mostly be concentrating on brightness and contrast of the image. I use the words brightness and contrast in the meaning that we know from everyday language. There are many more precise terms that we will be using here, like brightness, lightness, luminance, luma, value, levels. They all refer to brightness in general, but they don't mean exactly the same. During the course of the series I will be explaining the differences between them. When talking about brightness and contrast, we can also use the terms like lift, gamma, gain, offset, exposure, power, slope. I hope you know those terms, but if not, don't worry, it will all become clear when I begin to adjust them. Okay, what you are seeing right here are all of the effects that are available in Blender that can be used to adjust the brightness of certain areas or ranges of our image. What many artists do trying to adjust the image is to throw some random effect, no matter if they understand what the effect is doing, and try to simply move the sliders left and right and see if it improves the image or makes it worse. There is nothing wrong with such technique, but in many cases we can make our lives a little bit easier if we use a certain procedure. Most of the colorists start with setting the black point of the image. Then they set the white point. And only having done that, they begin to adjust the midtones. Let's try to apply this procedure to image like this. This is the frame that comes from footage shot on Ari Alexa camera. When converting this footage for editing, certain lookup tables are applied, such that we see exactly what was seen on set, the image that is not that flat, that is more juicy, but when color grading such footage, it's better to use the raw data. And this is what it looks like, and it's a very good starting point. I have converted this frame to EXR file format, so that I have all of the possible data to play with, and set the working area the way I like. In most cases, I don't use the backdrop here, but instead I use the UV image editor, because here I can not only see the image, but also check the color values when I left-click the image, and I also can reveal the scopes. When I hit T, I got the scopes, here I have the histogram and here the waveform. Here we have the visible range of the image from 0 to 1. And you see that most of the pixels are concentrated in this mid area. There is almost none very dark pixels and very bright pixels. And we can also see it right here. I like to see individual channels. No very dark pixels, no very bright pixels. It feels too bright. So intuitively, we may say, let's simply drop the brightness and contrast effect, increase the contrast, lower the brightness, and we should be done. But let's instead do it properly. Let's find the area of the image that should be black. We can zoom in here, and I think that this area, this point, should be black. The easiest way to set the black point and white point is to use the RGB curves effect. Color RGB curves but we will not be using the curve yet, but instead we will be using those two colors, black level and white level. Let's for the moment mute this effect, let's hit M, this way it doesn't influence what we are seeing right here, we are all the time watching the original image, and let's simply sample the black point, like this. Now let's try to find the place that should be white, and I think that it's somewhere here, those pixels should be white. So I will sample this color as the white level, unmute the effect and see what happens. It looks much better, but it still feels a little bit too bright and not contrasty enough. And it's not that obvious looking at the image, if it's because we have set not the right black level or white level, or it's because of the midtones. But here, when we look at the waveform, we see that there are some very dark pixels. So the black level seems okay. We should play a little bit with the midtones. It seems that some of the dark pixels should be even darker. The shape of the curve here determines what will happen with the original ranges of the image. These are the original ranges and here we have the output ranges. So let's take this area and make it darker or maybe even a little bit more. Perhaps we should also brighten those areas a little bit and we begin to see more juicy, more contrasty image that feels a lot better than the original one. This is before and this is after. 
Let's not take care about the colors at the moment, we will adjust them a little bit later. When sampling the black level and white level, we have altered the original colors. As you can see, those are not the shades of gray. There are some differences in red, green and blue channels. So let's say that we are happy with the levels, but we would like to restore the original colors. The easiest way would be to desaturate those colors. Let's change the controllers from RGB to HSV and simply set the saturation to zero and do exactly the same with the black level, saturation zero. And now we have not altered colors. In fact, I liked the previous result a little bit more. So let's try to undo this. Okay, so now we will follow the same procedure, but a little bit differently. We will not sample the black level or white level, but set it manually. Let's delete this node, add a new one, connect it here and connect it to the viewer. And this time I will not mute this node, but instead I will be setting the black level manually, watching the result here. I will be looking at the image itself, but also at the scopes. Let's reveal the black level. We have the HSV, hue, saturation, value controls, and let's increase the value. Let's maybe move this a little bit to this side. So now we are seeing the image and try to adjust the value so that some of the pixels begin to reach the bottom here or here. Now let's try to fill this area by adjusting the white point. This time we will lower the value. Let's leave it to something like this. I try to set those values such that some of the pixels reach the extremes, but not too many. And now we can introduce some S-curve like this and maybe like this. Adjusting those things manually is not that much more difficult, but it gives you the chance to achieve what you really like. And the scopes here may help a lot. Okay, let's do it once again, but a little bit differently. Same approach, same procedure, but a bit different use of RGB curves node. This time I will not be using those colors, but do everything on the curve. But we need to first set the black level. We can grab this point and move it a little bit to the right. And this way we are increasing the black level, which means that we are darkening the shadows. Now I would like to lower the white level to brighten the highlights. And I will do it like this by adjusting this point. I will grab it and move it to the left. And now I can adjust the midtones by setting the shape of this curve to something like this. And maybe this. So as you can see, we can set the levels of the image by using just a single curve, which is fine, but sometimes not that easy, especially here when setting the black level. As you can see, we have moved this point very slightly. It would be good to have more precision here. So to achieve this, let's split the procedure into three RGB curve nodes. One will be used to set the black level, the second one to set the white level, and then the third node will be used to adjust the midtones. So let's use one, two, three nodes, select them, hit F, connect the last one to the viewer, and we will use this one to set the black level, but we would like to have a little bit more precision. So let's change the factor from one to, let's say, 0 0.5. So this way we will have to move this point much further to achieve the same result, which means that we can be more precise. Let's even lower this to, I don't know, 0 0.3. And now it's a little bit easier to adjust the black level. But let's not move this point, let's not adjust the white point using this node because the same precision will be used. To adjust the white point we need the factor of 1. So let's use this node and simply move 
this point somewhere here or a little bit more and we will adjust the midtones using the third note but here we are working on the result of those two notes so it's a little bit easier to set the shape of this curve. So we used more notes but this way we can be more precise. RGB curves can be treated as the instruction. What should be done with the original values of the image? If we have the straight line like this, it means that the original image shouldn't be altered at all. We say every time you see this value, map it to this value. You see this value, map it to this value. So let's say that we move this point somewhere here. So I say that every time you see this value, make it pure black. Everything below this level will become black then something that had the brightness of 75% will be mapped to half of the brightness. If we move this point here, this will mean that black pixels will become brighter. So now we know what we do when we are moving those points, and then by setting the shape of this curve, we are simply mapping those values to those values. Every effect that alters the colors can have the representation in such curve. I am talking only about the effects that don't require information from surrounding pixels. I mean, the blur or glare cannot be represented as the RGB curve. But brightness, contrast, gamma, color balance, it is possible to create the same effects using just the curves. Sometimes it's easier, sometimes more difficult, but it is possible. Let's take the example of the color balance note. We have three sets of controllers, lift, gamma and gain. Each of them has the color wheel and the slider. Let's focus on the sliders only. When we move the slider for the lift a little bit up, we are in fact doing this. We are lifting the image. When we move it down, that's the equivalent in RGB curves. Gain. When we move it up, that's the representation in RGB curves. When we move it down, we are in fact doing this. Let's reset those colors and take a look at the gamma. Let's also reset the curves and see what is the representation of this slider in the curves. Gamma is in fact the power function. When we move this slider up, we are doing this. When we move it down, we are doing this. I am of course not 100% precise here when I'm setting the curve, but it's more or less the same. So how should we understand the words lift, gamma and gain? Sometimes we say that those are the shadows, those are the midtones and those are the highlights. Which is not 100% true, because adjusting the lift, we are influencing not only the shadows, but midtones and highlights as well, but a lot less. When I move this point up, it influences the shadows the most, but the highlights the least. The same applies to gain. When I move this point or do something like this, I influence the highlights the most and the shadows the least. When I adjust the gamma, I mostly influence the midtones. Adjusting the gamma doesn't change the white color at all and doesn't change the black color at all. And when I play with the wheels here, I simply now, I make mostly the shadows greenish and here I pull the highlights towards blue. So now when we understand how this note works, it becomes clear that we can as well use it to adjust the black level, white level and the midtones of the image. Adjusting the gamma, we cannot be as precise as when using the curves but we can use it to set the starting point. We can also use those wheels to set the black to the real black. Let's zoom in here and check the colors. We can move this point a little bit. So now those points became almost black. At least RGB values are more or less even. We can do the same with a white point. Like let's zoom in here and check this point. We see that the red channel and blue channel are almost the same, but the green channel is a little bit too high. So let's pull this point a little bit away from the green. 
and I would call this a good starting point. Let's introduce the RGB curves node and adjust the shape of this curve. Here in this example I used a little bit different approach, but all the time following the procedure, black level first, then white level, then midtones, some adjustments to the colors, and I got this result. It was achieved using only the primary color correction. Primary color correction means that we are adjusting the image as the whole without separating any areas or color ranges to treat them separately. And using just the techniques that I showed you allows us to achieve completely different feeling of the image. So we can have this result or this or this or something like that. And in the next episode I will show you how to achieve those looks using just the primary color correction and I will also introduce some secondary color correction. The term secondary color correction applies when we are separating certain ranges or areas of the image and treat them separately. That's all in this episode where I mostly was focusing on the levels of the image.